Okay, welcome back to this lecture of laminar and turbulent flow. We have uh, left the last lecture before introducing the topic of shear stresses in turbulent flow. So, we are going to continue with this particular topic. So, shear stress in turbulent flow. We are going to talk about a model that is called Bosnes model, where the <coughs> total shear stress in case of laminar flow it was due to the viscosity, viscous. Sorry, I will, yeah, that was only due to the viscous. But in a turbulent flow, there is an additional component of shear stress that happens because of the turbulence in the flow. So, therefore, the shear stress in total is much much larger than the viscous flow. At least it is definitely larger than the viscous flow because there is shear stress that is associated with turbulence too. So, Bosnes says as T viscous is mu du dr for laminar flow. Therefore, the shear stress due to, to the turbulence component is eta du by dy. Here you see this is similar. So, instead of mu there is something called eta, a new coefficient of viscosity okay? and this is called eddy viscosity. So, we are not going to the derivation right now at some point. Uh, we can we, we, we can see these derivations when the appropriate chapter comes, but now you have to take that the turbul the shear stress due to turbulence is eddy viscosity du by dy, very similar to the shear stress in the laminar flow. The, the coefficient is therefore different. Okay? And if we want to write a kinematic eddy viscosity, then we write it by epsilon epsilon for example. So, this can be written as eta by rho, similar type of definition as laminar flow. What is eta for laminar flow for example or mu for laminar flow that you already know, we have been doing that, it was 10 to the power minus 3 Pascal second. No, okay. So, eta for laminar flow will be 0, yes. So, but mu for this uh, laminar flow is 10 to the power minus 3 Pascal second. And if the flow is laminar, eta is going to be 0 because it is related to the turbulent viscosity. So, unlike the dynamic viscosity mu and kinematic viscosity nu, eta and epsilon are not fluid properties. They are not fluid properties. Okay? The values of eta and epsilon are dependent on the flow conditions. So, epsilon decreases towards the wall becoming 0 at the wall. So, the epsilon that is the eddy kinematic eddy viscosity decreases as you move towards the wall and becomes 0 at the wall. Now, coming to what is Reynolds shear stress. So, Reynolds in 1886 gave expressions for turbulent shear stress between two fluid layers separated by a small distance and he said that the shear stress due to turbulence can be written as minus rho u prime v prime whole bar. Actually, it is not an assumption, but this can actually be derived which we will do at some point in this hydraulics, hydraulic engineering course, but not now. So, you have to understand Reynolds shear stress is given by minus rho mu dash v dash and it does not have only one component, it has minus u dash w dash, it will have minus v dash w dash. So, there, there are different, there are some normal shear stress, but this is one of the shear stress components. Whereas, what is u prime? That is the fluctuating velocity component in x direction. V prime is fluctuating component of velocity in y direction. Experiments show that u prime v prime is usually a negative quantity. Therefore, the tau turbulence or minus rho u prime v prime whole bar is total or positive quantity. 
it has negative correlation that we will see. Now there is a concept of Prandtl's mixing length theory. So turbulence shear stress can be calculated if this thing is known u prime v prime whole bar is known because as we see the tau turbulence by Reynolds was given by minus rho u prime v prime whole bar. So what happen, what a nice thing it would be if we can calculate u prime v prime bar because that is unknown until now. Okay? So accurate determination of u prime v prime whole bar is very difficult. Therefore, in 1925 Prandtl introduced the concept of mixing length which can be utilized to express the shear stress here in terms of some measurable quantity. Okay? So mixing length Lm, he said it can be described in terms of mixing length Lm. He said mixing length Lm is the distance between two fluid layers in the vertical direction, in the y direction such that the bundles of fluid particles from one layer could reach the other layer and mix in the new layer in such a way that the momentum of the particle along the flow direction is the same. So he related it to mixing. Okay? And he, says, and he said that the mixing length is the distance between two fluid, fluid layers in the vertical direction okay? such that the, the bundles of fluid particles from one layer could reach the other layer and the mixing can happen, okay? something like this. So this is the velocity profile and he says he divided the fluids into layers and this he says is the mixing length. Okay? All right. We are going to explore this in more detail in the next slide. So Prandtl related u prime to mixing length Lm. He said that this u prime as you can see in the figure here, he said proportional to u prime but I am going to write it in the next slide. He related u prime to the mixing length Lm as he said this u prime can be written as mixing length Lm multiplied by the gradient of the average velocity. Okay, so he said u prime, this is very important to know Lm as du bar by dy. This is what his assumption was where v prime is also of the same order of magnitude as u bar and similarly this can also be written as v prime is equal to lm du bar by dy similar type of equation okay and if you substitute equation 11 and equation 12 in reynolds stress model which was it was tau turbulent is equal to minus u prime v prime whole bar you get so minus minus will become positive it will become tau turbulence is rho lm square du by dy square you can just substitute and see lm du bar by dy multiplied by lm du by dy bar okay is the same thing so it becomes rho lm square du bar by dy this is equation 13 so this is one of the, this is the mixing length theory of the Prandtl. So Prandtl also assumed that the mixing length Lm is a linear function of distance y from the wall or any solid boundary. Therefore, he said Lm can be written as Ky. So if you go back and see here now rho is known du by dy can be calculated because we are dealing in terms of average velocity right which can be measured now the only unknown is lm so how do we find this lm now so the problem is becoming less and less complex we are going from one variable to the other now the only unknown thing is lm so prandtl needed to relate this to something so he assumed that lm is a linear function of distance y and he said lm is equal to kappa into y 
where kappa is known as van karman constant and it has been found to be equal to 0.4 so he said mixing length is 0.4 times y this is quite an important uh, result okay so now we know everything for example right shear stress in turbulent flow was related in terms of uh, u prime v prime which was made by prandtl as uh, u prime and v prime are of the same order of magnitude and is equal to <coughs> in which was equal to which was proportional to du dy lm right and lm is equal to kappa into y so now we will see the turbulent flow in pipes now so in turbulent flow the viscous shear stresses exist only near the boundary so and most of the region is dominated by the turbulence so near the boundary the viscous shear stress will act and that are the only places where its existence hence the total shear stress can be approximately obtained from equation 13 okay as the total you know this was so this was equation 13 correct so we call this now equation 15 but uh, because most of the shear stress in turbulent flow is due to the turbulent shear stress so we can neglect the viscous shear stress uh, we say tau is equal to rho lm square du by dy whole square where u is the the time averaged velocity the over bar on u has been dropped for just for simplicity okay so if we use equation 14 in equation 15 what was equation 14 lm was kappa into y this was what we said in equation number 14 okay so we can simply write rho k kappa y whole square into du by dy whole square correct or we can simply write du by dy is 1 by kappa y divided by tau by rho and this is equation number 16 very simple so for small values of y it can be assumed so if for if the y is very small we can assume that tau is equal to tau not where tau not is the shear stress at the pipe wall and can be assumed to be a constant so at the wall the shear stress is assumed to be constant and equal to tau not okay and therefore what we can say if we substitute tau is equal to tau not in equation 16 we can obtain du by dy is equal to 1 by kappa y in the root t not by rho or du by dy this quantity actually tau not can be written as rho so but the catch here is what is the catch we have considered less small value of y correct so du by dy can be written as 1 by kappa y and under root tau by rho is rho u star so it becomes 1 by kappa by u star and this u not u star under root tau not by rho is the shear velocity and this has the dimension of velocity and if you integrate the equation number 17 so what we can get is simple integration it will get u star by kappa y will be ln y plus a constant c this is very simple integration from here to here you can attempt it okay then using the boundary conditions what are the boundary conditions so u at y is equal to r where r is the radius of the pipe okay we will get u is equal to u max all right that is what we have seen at the center line of the pipe the velocity is going to be the maximum okay so if we use this boundary condition u at y is equal to r is u max we can get u is equal to 
you know u we instead put u max here ok y will be r and therefore, we can obtain c ok c will be u max minus u star by k ln a kappa ln r and if we substitute this as c then we can get equation u is equal to u max plus u u, u star by kappa ln y minus ln r or u is equal to u max plus u star by kappa ln y by r ok or if when we substitute kappa is 0 0.4 we can get u is equal to u max plus 2.5 u star ln y by r and this is equation number 20. This is just simple manu manu manipulation and as you can see we have derived a logarithmic velocity profile starting with the Prandtl mixing length theory for turbulent fluid flow. Okay. So, laminar flow was something like this. Okay. A parabolic profile, here a profile is little different, u is u maximum plus a logarithmic profile. So, it looks like something like this. Okay. Now, the equation 20, this equation 20 can be expressed as u max. So, what we do is we bring u on the other side. Okay. So, we bring u on this side and we take this whole side component this side. Then what we result is u max minus u because u max will always be larger than u is equal to 2.5 u star ln r by y. y will always be less than r or we bring u frictional velocity down then we get u max you bring it down here by dividing then you get u max minus u by u star scale to 2.5 ln r by y and we so this is ln correct so we can put it in form of log this is simple manipulation we can get u max minus u by u star is equal to 5.75 log to the base 10 r by y ok u minus u max minus u is called the velocity defect or velocity defect law ok this is velocity defect law this is just simple you know multi uh, manipulation of these terms here ok so now we are going to solve uh, one of the problems problem number 7 and what it says is the velocity of water. So, what we have learned in this particular uh, you know lecture is about the turbulent flow and this problem 7 will help you in solving any problem that is based on this particular concept. So, it says the velocities of water through a pipe of diameter 10 centimeter are 4 meters per second and 3.5 meters per second at the center of the pipe and 2 centimeters from the pipe center ok respectively considering turbulent flow in pipe determine the shear stress at the wall. So, we need to determine tau naught ok. So, let us see how are we going to solve this problem we are going to have a white screen first as always what we do we solve a we write given diameter is given as 10 centimeter try to always write down in SI units ok. So, we write 0 0.1 meter. So, diameter is 10 so radius is going to be 0 0.05 meter ok. U max is given is given as 4 meters per second that is at y is equal to r correct. And this is also given u at r is equal to 2 centimeter is given 3.5 meters per second that is y is equal to r minus r. So, y is going to be 5 minus 2 is equal to 3 centimeter alright. So, u at y is equal to 3 is equal to 
meters per second so all right so now u max we are using the minus u by u star was 5.75 5 log r by y okay so substituting the values here this from here this equation 4 minus 3.5 divided by u star is equal to 5.75 log base 10 5 by 3 this will give us u star as 0.392 meters per second we also know u star is under root tau not by rho or tau not is rho u star whole square therefore tau not rho is 1000 and u star we already got sorry 0.392 0.392 whole square so tau not is coming out to be 153.6 newton per meter square this is the solution to the question that we have at hand all right so going back again to the slide so what we got was approximately 153 newton per meter square the shear stress at the wall okay so now the turbulent velocity profile is much fuller compared to the parabolic profile of laminar flow case okay so actually this is the flow this is the true picture this is the laminar flow that we have seen before but below is this is the v average and the velocity fluctuates or deviates from these depending upon the flow condition so this is the v average line okay there are several other layers viscous sub layer buffer layer overlap layer and turbulent layer so as i told you in the last slide there are different layers different layers in turbulent flow and we are going to talk about that turbulent flow along a wall consists of four regions okay viscous sub layer this layer is this layer next to the wall so this is the closest to the wall where the viscous effects are dominant and the velocity profile is almost linear okay so in viscous sub layer the viscous effects are dominant and the velocity profile is linear in the buffer layer though turbulent effects are becoming significant the viscous effects are still dominating okay in the overlap layer the turbulent effects are much more significant but still not dominant okay in the overlap layer in the turbulent layer the turbulent effects dominate over these viscous effects now when it comes to these uh, beds and uh, these regimes some of the important terms that are there is hydrodynamically rough and smooth boundaries okay so this is the if you see there is a term called k okay here if in here so k here is the mean height of the surface irregularities we talked in the beginning that the turbulence could occur due to the presence of irregularities on the surface so let's say the mean height of the surface irregularities is k 
and delta dash for example is the height of viscous or laminar sublayer the first layer that we talked the viscous sublayer okay that was where the velocity profile was almost linear okay so outside the laminar sublayer the flow is turbulent that that is what we have talked about eddies present in the turbulent zone try to penetrate the laminar sublayer and interact with the boundary okay but when the surface irregularities are much smaller than delta dash the height of the viscous sublayer the eddies are unable to reach the surface irregularities okay when the roughness height is much much less therefore we define that boundary as a smooth boundary so smooth boundary are the one where the high, the thickness of the viscous sublayer is much larger than the surface irregularities we will see what those surface irregularities here represented by k when k is much much larger than the delta dash that is the thickness of viscous sublayer the irregularities are above the laminar sublayer leading to the interaction of eddies with the surface irregularities and therefore these are called rough boundaries from nikuratse's roughness k by delta dash if it is less than 20.25 so these values which you are going to talk about has been derived from experiments by nikuratse nikuratse said if k which is the height of the irregularities divided by the thickness of viscous sublayer is less than 0.25 the boundary is smooth if k by delta dash is greater than 6 the boundary is for sure rough but if it lies in between 0.25 and 6 the boundary is transitional in terms of roughness reynolds number so actually there is something called roughness reynolds number that is dependent upon k the height of the uh, irregularities so in terms of roughness reynolds number if this reynolds number is less than the 4 the boundary is smooth if it is more than the is 100 then the boundary is rough and it is lies between 4 and 100 the boundary is transitional so either we can calculate it in terms of k by delta where k is the height of the irregularities and lambda dash is the viscous sublayer or more it's more easy to calculate u star by u star k by nu if this is less than 4 it is smooth if it is more than 100 then rough otherwise in between it is a transitional boundary now we will solve one problem about this particular concept so so the question is a pipeline carrying water has average height of irregularities projecting from the surface of the boundary of the pipe as 0.15 mm what type of boundary it is we have to estimate the rough or smooth or transitional boundary the shear stress at the pipe wall is 4.9 meters per sec per newton per meter square and the kinematic viscosity is 0.01 stokes so shear stress at the wall is given right so we will be able to calculate u star from here but okay better that we go and start doing the problems as we have been doing so we have to write the things that we it has been given to us k is given as 0.15 mm it's always a good habit to write it into si unit into 10 to the power minus 3 meter tau not is actually given here 4.9 newton per meter square okay and nu is also given 0.01 into 10 to the power minus 4 meter square per second therefore we can simply calculate u square as under root tau not by rho as i told you and this will come out to be under root 4.9 by 1000 so it will come out to be 0.07 meters per second very simple so best is to calculate the roughness reynolds 
number r e star and that is given as u star k by nu so r e star is u star is 0.07 k is 0.15 into 10 to the power minus 3 and nu is 0.01 into 10 to the power minus 4 and that comes to be 10.5 so as re star lies between 6 and 100 a uh, 4 and 100 this implies that the boundary is transitional okay so just going back to that screen so what we have got is re star is 10.5 implying transitional boundary okay so <coughs> this is the place where we will end this lecture of ours today Uh, and resume in the next lecture uh, and we'll talk about turbulent flow in smooth pipes so i will see you in the next lecture thank you